This is the third video for the Merg CBUS Beginners Kit 101. Previous videos covered building the modules and connecting them up and testing them. This video is intended to show how the modules can be configured to perform the required functions. If you have followed the first two videos, you should have the two modules mounted on a temporary board and be able to switch an LED on and off. But how is this happening? What does all the electronics in the two modules do that makes an LED turn on and off when a switch is operated? Let's go back to the beginning. Like most people, I started off with an oval of track. Two wires connected a controller to the tracks, and at three years old, I could play with my train. Then Dad added a couple of sidings and an FX turntable, all manually controlled, of course. When I was a teenager, I started playing with point motors. This needed a control panel with stud contacts and electric pencil. Next came some signals, with switches added to the control panel. Of course, my layout grew bigger and needed a second controller. And more point motors and signals were needed. More sidings were needed, with more point motors. And yet more signals. Before I knew it, I had over 50 wires running from the layout to the control panel. And that is how it was with several personal and club layouts over the years. Then I joined Merg and found out about layout control buses. A layout control bus is a digital signal cable that runs all around a layout and can connect it with control panels. Electronic modules located around the layout, close to points, signals or whatever, link onto the control bus. The point motors, signals, etc. just need to connect to a nearby module. The modules can send digital messages onto the bus as a result of some input, such as a switch being thrown or a train being detected at a location, and can receive messages sent by other modules and perform some action dependent on the message, such as operating a point or illuminating a signal. DCC is often used as a layout control bus, but it was originally designed to control trains and is not ideally suited for dealing with accessories. It is really meant to be a one-way communication from the command station to the layout and does not handle information coming back from the layout very well. Most modern layout control buses are based on CAN technology. This is the bus system used in all modern cars allowing provision of all the electric toys and gizmos expected these days, without the need of a large, heavy and complex wiring loom. Because of its widespread use in cars, CAN technology is tried and tested, robust and reliable, plentiful and cheap. Merg CBUS is based on CAN technology. CBUS was designed over 10 years ago and is in use on many layouts. The Merg kit logger includes a good range of different modules, sufficient for most needs. Merg members continue to come up with new module designs of specialised requirements, and design details are often published, allowing other members to procure the components and build them or modify them for their own needs. So, what exactly does CBUS do? It allows any connected module to broadcast a message across the bus. All the other modules can see that message, but only modules that have been configured to act on that message will perform any action on receiving it. CBUS supports various types of message, but the only type of interest to us at the moment are accessory control events. Each of these events has a unique number, and there can be over 4 billion different event numbers, which should be ample for most layouts. Each numbered event has two possible states, on or off. CBUS wires can be up to 100 metres long, but bridges can be used to link separate CBUS segments if longer distances are required. Each CBUS segment can support up to 110 modules or nodes. However, an average to large layout would probably only require a few dozen modules and maybe 30 metres of bus wire. Home layouts would be much simpler, 
my own layout has just four modules and the bus is under three meters long. CBUS needs two wires called CANH and CANL for communication of messages. However, all the attached modules need a common ground or naught volts. In a car, the metal bodywork would provide this function. On a layout, it is easier to include a third wire in the bus, connecting all the module grounds. On larger layouts, it might be prudent to install separate power supplies around the layout to power accessory modules. On smaller layouts, a single 12 volt DC power supply often suffices. In this case, a fourth wire may be added to the bus to carry the 12 volt supply around the layout. So we have our bus with modules attached and event messages can be broadcast around the layout. But what do these events do? Well, that's up to us and what we teach the modules to do. Let's make a start. Well, actually, we already made a start when we were testing our modules. We configured them that, so that throwing a switch connected to one module caused an LED connected to the other module to light up. How did we do that? First, make sure all the red and yellow switches on both modules are in the off position and connect the 12 volt power supply. The CANACE-8C module is an 8 input device. When one of its inputs is pulled down to 0 volts, in this case by throwing a switch, it will produce an ON event that is broadcast across the bus. When the input is allowed to rise up again by opening the switch, the equivalent OFF event is broadcast on the bus. The actual event numbers produced are not important at the moment, so we will just name them switch 1 through to switch 8. We will come back to event numbers again later. The CANAC8 module is an 8 output device. Each of the outputs can pull down to 0 volts when switched on and will allow the output to float when switched off. We have LEDs with current limiting resistors linked to plus 5 volts connected to each of the outputs, so they will light up when the output is on and extinguish when the output is off. We will call them LED1 through to LED8. So how do we configure LED8 to be operated by switch 1? We fiddled around with the red switches on the CANAC8. The left hand three switches are labelled 0, 1 and 2. These switches are used to select an output that is to be taught an event. Confusingly, they are used together to specify a binary number representing 0 through to 7. LED 1 is identified by 0 and LED 8 is identified by 7. For more confusion, the switches are inverted, so in the OFF position they represent a 1, and in the ON position they represent a 0. With all three switches in the OFF position, they form the binary number 111, which equates to 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. This indicates LED 8. Let us configure LED 4. That is identified by the number 3, which is 0, 1, 1 in binary. So select switch 2 needs to be set to indicate 0, which means it must be set to ON. Switches 1 and 0 need to be left OFF, so that they represent 1s. As I said, it's a bit confusing, but there is a handy table on page 4 of the Kit 101 build instructions, showing the switch positions needed to indicate each of the outputs. Now that we have specified which output we want to configure, we can now tell the module that it has to learn an event. We do this by switching the switch labelled L for learn to on. 
the next event that is broadcast on a bus will be learned. To broadcast an event, we will put switch 5 on the Canace HC experimenters module to ON. The Canac 8 should now have learnt that event. So switch the L switch to OFF again. Turn switch 5 OFF again. The next time it is switched on, LED 4 should light up. Meanwhile, switch 1 should still operate LED 8. Have fun turning switches 1 and 5 on and off. OK, bored with that already. Let's try another one. Let's make switch 1 illuminate LED 1. The table says all three selection switches need to be on to indicate LED 1. Then turn the learn switch on. Turn switch 1 on, then turn the learn switches off again. And switch 1 off again. Hang on a minute. Oh, uh, wait. Switch 1 was already controlling LED 8. What happens when we turn switch 1 on again? LED 1 and LED 8 both light up. We have a single event producing more than one action. In fact, one event could result in actions taken by multiple modules around the bus. This means a switch on the control panel could light up an LED on the control panel, switch a point on the layout, and light up green and red signals all around the layout at the same time. That could be cool. OK, what shall we do next? Let's configure switch 2 to operate LED 4. LED 4 is selected by selection switches 0 and 1 being off and 2 being on. Switch the learn on. Operate switch 2, then return all the switches to off. Now switch 2 operates LED 4, but switch 5 also operates LED 4. So now we have multiple events producing the same action. Again, that opens up some possibilities. Now I will configure switch 3 to operate LED 2. Getting the hang of it now, select LED 2, learn, Turn on switch 3. Easy peasy. Next, I'll configure switch 3 to operate LED 3. But this time, I'll also switch on the switch labelled P. So, what happens when I turn switch 3 on and off now? P stands for polarity. LED 3 switches off when switch 3 is turned on, and vice versa. Now that could come in handy, couldn't it? We have taught the Canac 8 to perform several actions on receiving various events. I could add more actions and events, but what if I change my mind? Switch 1 currently operates both LED 1 and LED 8. What if I no longer want it to operate LED 8? Unfortunately, I cannot remove just one action. I will have to remove the event and all its actions, and then learn Switch 1 to operate LED 1 all over again. To do this, I turn on the switch labelled U for unlearn, as well as the switch L for learn. When I operate switch 1 now, the Canac 8 will forget the switch 1 event. If I now turn the U and L switches off again, switch 1 no longer has any effect. I can learn the switch 1 event to operate LED 1 again.
Switch 1 now only operates LED 1. Switches 2, 3 and 5 still operate as before. One final thing we can do with the Canac 8 is to turn the U switch on, unplug the power and plug back in again, then turn the U switch off again. The Canac 8 has now forgotten all the events and actions we had previously taught it. It is totally unconfigured and ready to learn all over again. How about the Canace 8C module? We have not done any configuring on that yet. Well, there's not much that can be configured without some extra hardware. The only useful thing we can change is the node number of the module. Before we do that, we need to learn a bit more about events. There are actually two types of accessory control event used in CBUS, long events and short events. Long event numbers include the node number of the module that produces them. Short events do not, or in effect, have a node number of zero. Other than that, they work in exactly the same way. Our Canace 8C produces long events. Modules that produce long events need to have a node number allocated to them. Normally, these should be unique on a network. The node number allocated to the Canace 8C module is defined by the select switches 0, 1, 2 and 3 and two jumper connections on the PCB. Again it is inverted binary, on for a 0 and off for a 1. The six binary bits allow for 64 combinations or node numbers to be selected. There is a useful table in the Canace 8C technical bulletin showing the settings for each node number. With only one Canace 8C in the kit 101 it does not really matter what node number is allocated. With all the select switches off and no jumpers fitted it actually defaulted to node number 16. However if you want more than one Canace 8C on your network you will need to allocate different node numbers to them. Set the required node number with the switches and jumpers and then unplug the power and plug it back in again. The module will now have the selected node number. Note that if the switch positions change then a different node number will be set the next time the module is powered up and it will start producing different event numbers. So that is it for configuring Kit 101 on its own. By adding another event producing module, there are a few more things we can do with the Canace 8C, like setting it only to produce on events. We could also make it respond to an event that causes it to send events corresponding to all eight inputs. This is often referred to as a start of day event, as it can be used to set all the modules to a sensible state when a layout is powered up. Adding an interface to a computer, such as the one included in Kit 102, opens up a whole new world of configuration, unlocking lots of extra features in both the Kit 101 modules. But that is beyond the scope of this video. Meanwhile, let your imagination roam free with Kit 101. The inputs to the Canace 8C could be switches on a control panel, or micro switches attached to point motors, or relay contacts, or train on track detectors, spot location detectors, or some other electronic modules. The outputs from the Canac 8 could be LEDs on the control panel, or color light signals, or could switch relays, or point motors, or servo modules, or sound players, or even bubble machines. 
So good luck and have fun.